Last night, things got out of control again in Wisconsin. I mean, I can't believe we're here even without the uh, conventions. I told you for, what, two years, Wisconsin, I would sell my house right now in Wisconsin. Democratic convention is going to be held there. This is going to be a summer of blood. And uh, and uh, I wouldn't want to own property there because it's going to be riots without the convention. It's happening. And I think worse uh, than than I would have expected uh, this this quickly, at least. And the uh, federal government has finally been allowed in. The governor yesterday said to Donald Trump, OK, OK, help. So he sent them in. Now, we have Ken Cuccinelli uh, on the phone. He's the, um, the uh, let me just, I want to get this right here. Hang on, I don't have, even have my glasses on. He is the acting deputy secretary of the uh, Department of Homeland Security. Ken, welcome to the program. Always good to be with you, Glenn. <sighs> so, uh, Ken, you, you guys are in a really tough position um, tell me what you're planning on doing and when does help arrive in Wisconsin? So that's fair to say, but I, I would note that unlike, say, the Portland story that we've all been following for three months, and of course I've been in the middle of it, here we have a governor who at least is willing to use his National Guard for one of the things they, are, they exist for, right. and that is keeping the peace. Um, he didn't bring enough numbers initially but he kept moving the numbers up to get to a point uh, where they're adequate. And he and the president spoke, of course, and the uh, president has spoken vehemently about his desire for peace in all these communities and the willingness to move people in. And this is the peace through strength plan in, in the civilian environment, Glenn. It's, you know, you bring enough law enforcement responsibly executed um, and there is no violence. We saw that happen in Minneapolis after the tragic killing of George Floyd. As the first reaction in Minneapolis was, give them room to riot, the old Baltimore concept. Well, that didn't work. And uh, so then they brought in the guard, and lo and behold, things were calmed down because those who contemplated violence knew there were consequences. And we're seeing that shift take place in Wisconsin. Do we wish it happened faster? Yes. But uh, you'll see uh, the Department of Justice is moving over 200 uh, marshals, FBI agents, ATF agents into Kenosha. Um, They've uh, also got extra prosecution help up there, all in addition to uh, to the guard commitments from the president and the willingness of Governor Evers to use them. So here's the problem that we have. The left uh, has run unchecked. And the American people, I mean, five million new gun owners in the United States just in the first quarter of of this year or second quarter of this year. Um, And that's all because people feel like there's there's nobody to protect me. This is why the Second Amendment says a well-regulated militia and a militia is happening as your last resort. There's there's nobody coming to help you. And that's, I think, where people are starting to feel. And that becomes very dangerous. So how do you guys um, at the federal level, because I'm a I'm a federalist, I believe in the state power. Yeah, you too. So how do you balance this so it doesn't spiral out of control? Because the left wants a fight. They want it. They do in many respects. I mean, you can see lots of these politicians on the left who encourage the violent protesters but without condemning the violent correct and um and 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 even using the phrase violent protesters is not accurate those are rioters and criminals yeah in some cases terrorists so um you know we 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 do need to do need to fix that even myself but but uh that kind of encouragement reaches a situation like we saw in portland last weekend where you then get in kenosha frankly you get people who don't believe that law enforcement is going to be provided or allowed to do its job adequately, and they start showing up to do it. And very uh, sort of frontier mentality, if you will, in some cases. Uh, but also, it's other groups who, who are looking to fight. And if you don't calm that violence soon and relatively quickly, you invite 
that kind of you do. violence, which really spirals out of control. That that's a, that's war in the streets um, between different Americans, and they may all be uh, misbehaving, to put it mildly, but but they're they've been given free reign to do so by the left wing leadership in those communities. And you then you ask the Federalist question, which is one I'm very sensitive to. I'm sure that's no surprise to you um, that. We have limited federal jurisdiction. The federal government isn't just another police um, we can't or be. office. Yeah. And we can't be. No, we don't want that. That is a, you know. It's really you bad. You get what you vote for. Yes. And in Portland, they're getting destruction. And they're not going to, I mean, who would you open a business in Portland in the next 50 years? No. I would. No. And, no, it's going to destroy and, these and, cities. It is going to destroy these cities. So, That's right. And, 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 and the people least able to adjust to that are the poorest people in those cities so ken help me out on this you're you used to be the uh attorney general for the state of virginia um this kid that shot the guy in the head the other day and then shot the other guy in the arm he is being painted as you know just this militia white supremacist kind of guy I would not want my kid down there. I would tell them not to go. I would say, even if you want to be an angel of mercy, then you have to be like Mother Teresa. Don't bring a gun. Um, It's a dangerous, dangerous situation. However, we have him on tape a half hour before uh, talking about his view. He seems like he's just there. He's like, look, I'm only bringing my gun because I'm not stupid. I know it's dangerous and I'm going to defend myself, uh, but I'm here to do medical aid. Then you have the guy who was killed. We have him on three different occasions taunting and chasing and tackling this kid. The third time is when he turns because he's right on top of him and shoots. And he continues to uh, chase him, and then he shoots him in the head. Then the other guy that he shoots while he's laying down, we have video of that guy approaching him with a gun, pointing it to him like execution style, and that's when he shoots that guy's arm off. They're charging him with first-degree murder. How? How? Well, that's a pretty knee-jerk reaction um and you know they're charging him because he shot people but you're gonna see undoubtedly the self-defense argument made i i tweeted on this yesterday noting with a lot of the interviews that this kid happened to give beforehand um he was not speaking against any of the people protesting or any of the views no so so you know you've got to and my point in that i was tweeting about is this is This is complex investigation. And to your point, the the instant labeling is likely inaccurate, though I don't have enough information to draw a conclusion. Neither do I. I don't want to do that either. But my my point is, neither does anybody else. Correct. And um, but there's a desire to paint a narrative out there that uh, there's a lot of evidence just with this particular kid that doesn't seem to fit. So um, I would note that to our earlier discussion, when you let violence run amok like this, you get people who just feel like they're, you know, doing their duty, backing up police, Correct. obviously without the training, without the coordination uh, of mutual support of other security forces, um, going out there and, and uh, trying to do what this kid was doing. And right. you end up with this kind of scattered violence and uh and i don't think anybody wants that no anywhere in any of their cities and yet i mean kenosha it's not like i know you know detroit i know but i, I, mean, I, I this, tell you can be any city in america they they we had several reports last night of neighborhoods um of people walking down the street three o'clock in the morning wake up wake up you know give us your hey, houses got, that what that's got emails the, from richmond you know, there's nothing has happened in Richmond, per se. I got an email yet this morning about incidents like this from last night. And when that multiple gunshots as well, when that happens, you will have, you know, citizens watch uh, parties and yeah. they'll have guns. And yeah, because they if they feel they the police train. are not going to help them, they will band together. And that's a bad situation. But I completely understand it. If I think police are not coming to my neighborhood you damn right I've got a gun, and I'll shoot you on my property. Well, and, and honestly, uh, self-defense is a, the most 
the single most important thing the Second Amendment is for, right? Right. So um, there were no police in 1791 when uh, when that was ratified. And, um, it, you know, there weren't for many, many years in the United States. So people are used to the cultural requirement of Protecting. at least being protect being the, their first line of defense. You Correct. know, we are our own first line of defense. Correct. And when you are in cities where you've got politicians who refuse, as we see in Portland, to uh, to do police work, um, then you can fully expect to see more of this kind of response. People are going to take things on themselves, and they don't have, you know, crowd control munitions. When they're threatened, they only have one next step to go to, and that's shooting for self-defense. And- if we want to avoid this, we need we need better leadership in many of these cities. 